Yeah, we have it natively. Yep. So good evening, everyone. Jeff Teeley here. And um, if you were here last week on the test class, this is going to be very different than an evening um, of you kind of watching our Instagram feeds. This is going to be more like just hanging out with Ali and myself. We're going to try to keep it to about an hour. Um, and just so you know, uh, your funds are going to uh, charity and they're also going to be going to Tad Wayland, our sous chef as well, who's um, helped us throughout this time. And him, like a lot of food people, have been greatly affected. So there it is. If you have any questions, throw them up on the screen. But I'm going to kind of get into it. And uh, I really appreciate you guys all being here. I will be posting a recording of this. And since we have a new camera, it should be much better video quality uh, for the cloud and to cook along with again or just to kind of make fun of me when I do make mistakes because it is all going to um, be recorded. What's up, Iowa? How's it going? Allie, you always make fun of me. People want to see you make fun of me. And hopefully Ta Allie will jump into the camera. Um, so we're talking about Thai food tonight. Um, and so what makes Thai food unique, right? I'm going to start with, again, the cliff notes. If I start to see emojis of you falling asleep, um, uh, I get it. I'm going to move forward really fast. I, I have taught this stuff for almost 20 years for, from professional chef to home cooks. And I'm going to try to find the middle ground to kind of give you the really big cliff notes highlights and not put you to sleep and give you the minutia. Um, so five flavors we're talking about, right? I think all food is a balance of five flavors, right? We are always trying to balance hot, sour, salty, sweet, and savory, okay? Uh, so when people are starting to adventure into, um, you know, international global cuisine, you just kind of got to think about all these ingredients as how do they fit in hot, sour, salty, sweet? I mean, that's really all this is about. So there's a Thai word that uh, kind of sums up the perfect flavor balance between hot, sour, salty, sweet, and savory. It's spelled Y-U-M. What is that? Yum. It's not just a corny ass joke that I tell all the time. Dad jokes, hashtag. Um, it's actually a word. Think about that Thai soup that you love so much. Dom yum. Think about Thai beef salad. Yum. You're also going to learn some Thai language tonight. Um, yum just means hot, sour, salty, sweet, and balanced. So um, I, I, I created a, a TV show like 20 years ago called Chasing the Yum. And Allie interprets it as something dirty. It is not. Um, so not you, you, yeah. caught, you, you actually married the yum, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, and um, so your job as a Thai cook is just to chase the yum. That's it. Find that perfect balance point, that nirvana of flavor balance. And the thing is, there's like 80 of us here. And we all have an individual kind of palate preference. So if I, as a teacher, teach you how to use the ingredients and what they mean and how they play to that balance, you can customize the dish and find your own yum. That's all I'm gonna to try to do. When I write recipes, I try to write a recipe that kind of finds that nice kind of balance point where I think most people are gonna enjoy it. But if you're like, I'm a spice head, Jet. I love acid, I love this, then you're gonna know by the end of this class how to balance that out. How does that sound? That's where we're going today. Allie's admitting people. Allie's taking, she's running the camera um, and running the board. So that is our job. Now, the number one rule in Asian cooking is when you're cooking a cuisine, use the ingredients from that country. It's pretty black and white. Like the number one issue most people have is, Jet, my Asian food all tastes the same. What is the problem? And I'm like, what's your sauce? And they're like, Kikoman. And I'm like, seriously, bro. And if you use Kikoman to cook Thai food and Chinese food, and Japanese food and Korean food, yo, I don't want to curse. The stuff's all going to taste the same. So let's get into the Thai pantry. Like we, in China, when we do China in two weeks, we'll do the Chinese pantry. In Japan, we'll do the Japanese pantry. And in knife skills, it's going to be more like a Kung Fu class via, uh, via, via, via Zoom. Um, and if you want to like stand there and kind of cut with me, uh, I recommend it. And I'll send out a link of ingredients and vegetables I think should work. So no new comments so far. Everyone's paying attention. I love it. Okay, sounds good. Um, all right. So let's do it. First dish we're going to make tonight is going to be tom ka kai. And let's learn some language, all right? Uh, we're going to do some call-outs on ingredients. This is, in my opinion, software. Um, this is hardware. Does that make sense? So uh, let's talk about basic hardware we're going to be using this evening. Um, fish sauce, the all-purpose go-to. Um, everything in Thai food revolves around this if it's salty, okay? It's made of anchovy, salt, and water. 
Uh, good fish sauce is amber in color. It's not muddy or opaque. There are different types of fish sauce. So make sure you get a fish sauce um, that is Thai or Vietnamese. I'll allow Vietnamese. I'm basically just going to contradict everything I just said. Uh, three crab fish sauce is pretty delicious. All right, fresh bottle. All right, so, um, so Thai pantry list, you got it. If you guys have suggestions, throw them in the comments or email me and I'll put it together. Um, salt and savory. I need to teach you another salt here. Um, there's Thai soybean sauce in, in one of the recipes. We use soy sauce in all over Asia. Thai soy sauce has a sweeter taste, less briny or brackish. And there's two kinds that most Thai families use. It's either Maggi sauce right here, or it's gonna be golden mountain sauce. So salt. You're rarely gonna see us adding salt in the crystallized form, okay? Uh, these are all products that are fermented and have salt in them. And we're gonna be inserting salt via these two, um, primarily tonight for, for this class. Um, uh, sweet, sugar or palm sugar, all right? Spices gets a little deep. Um, uh, I'm gonna talk about some chilies later on, but I do wanna tell you a quick note really quick. See this stuff? What is this? What is this? All right, this is sriracha. No, it's not. This is a bottle of lies. That's what I'm telling you right now, straight up, okay? Siracha or sriracha is a province in uh, coastal Thailand, central Thailand, that grows uh, really phenomenal chilies. So Thai people have created this chili sauce of garlic and vinegar and, and, and chili. And, and real siracha should be from siracha. Kind of like champagne, kind of like, um, you know, uh, 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 what are those peppers from, from New Mexico, hatch chilies, right? Uh, it's got to be from there. So this is delicious for pho and for, um, you know, spicy tuna rolls and just kind of all purpose sauce. Mind blown, David says. Um, that's disappointing. It's okay. David Tran has made a billion dollars off this and God bless him and good for him. I'm not mad at it. I just want to educate you guys of real sriracha. Um, Thai sriracha has a sweeter, more balanced flavor, kind of like chasing the yum. <laughs> Crazy. This is more acid. Uh, this is more more hot, this is gonna be more balanced. All right, if you can find it, fine, no big deal. Um, other call outs, tamarind is a very confusing, uh, I'm killing Deb, I'm sorry. Um, that's so, so um, uh, tamarind is a very confusing ingredient. It, it, it's a potted fruit, originated in Africa, grew around the world, around the equator, um, the equatorial line, but Thai tamarind, uh, we, we yet, we've tried to confuse it even further. It's really not fair how we do this, right? Thai tamarind, is actually unfair because we call this concentrate. And it's not a concentrate. It's basically just tamarind cooking liquid. So this is my favorite way if you can get the liquid product of Thailand. Um, and you don't need to dilute it, all, although it's called a concentrate. Um, and then there's the block form. I sent you guys a link to, for a video to mess with the actual block form. That stuff lasts longer in your pantry. Works great, except there's a few more steps. This comes right out of the uh, bottle. Good to go. Uh, keto sweetener is a good question. You couldn't find tamarind. Don't even worry about it. I want you to up the vinegar instead. Okay. Um, keto, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. You guys are gonna have to tell me. I've used Splenda when I've cooked for my, my guests that, um, that, that couldn't use straight sugar. And I, I think Splenda is the closest flavor. Don't start lecturing me about like, like, I'm not a doctor. I'm just chasing flavors. So Splenda works really well for me, okay? After, after and the only thing you need to put in the refrigerator after opening, guys, I would put tamarind in the refrigerator. And uh, if we had oyster sauce, which we don't use, which we'll use in the Chinese class, then I would do that. This is the only one I want you to put in the fridge. Does that make sense? Everything else, cold, dark place. Monk fruit works really well as well. I, I've used it. It's got a decent flavor. And coconut milk here, guys, we're going to talk about in a little bit. If you are using a coconut milk, take it out of the can immediately uh, and then store it out of the can. You don't want to store anything in cans once you open them. What's the name of the original sriracha? This is called, it should be Silacha Panit, but it's not. It's actually a knockoff of a knockoff. So this is just shark brand. This is just shark brand. But you can also tell because there's a Thailand label on it um, and it's going to be very, very close. So if you made your own tamarind, it would absolutely work. If you made your own tamarind from just deshelling, that would work great, um, Halsey. Good stuff. Um, hey, well, this is working. This chat thing is actually really working. All right, I'm gonna shut up so I can start cooking. Who's falling asleep? Aren't you guys tired of me talking? Man, I'm tired of me talking. Ali, for show, is tired of me talking. Um, all right, so more software stuff that, where we can actually get cooking. Um, uh, shout out to Tad Whalen, who actually put all these trays together, guys. 
um, he did all the prep because we had a Food Network thing. Always good to learn more. I agree, uh, Victoria. Um, okay, let's make soup. So we're gonna make tom uh, ka gai. Okay, uh, that literally translates to um, galanga chicken soup. We need to learn the Trinity. Okay, the Trinity. Uh, French have mirepoix, celery, carrots, onions. They put it in all their soup stocks as a base. Um, to bring flavor to soup. Thai people use a different trinity. Here is our trinity. Galanga. It is not ginger. Call it ginger and I'm going to slap your hand. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a waxier. So the kids are going to be coming home soon. So if you guys hear dogs barking, it's like you guys are hanging out with us. All right. Um, and we love them. And that's just the way it's going to be. Okay. I can send a list of the brands. I'll take photos. How does that sound? That's good, um, Sue. Waxy. Um, very dense. Smells like pine, smells like pine, but tastes like uh, chili. Like it has a, a hot bite to it. Lemongrass, grows out of the ground like so. Um, and I'm gonna cut the bottom bulb of the lemongrass. If this was growing out of the ground, this is the ground, my hand. I would snip it right above the thickest part of the bulb. It will keep producing. Does that make sense? So let's do that. And, and uh, I'm just gonna cut it like that. And then I'm gonna cut the top 50%. So you see where these leaves are? Come down about halfway. I know you go, those of you that don't like to throw stuff away, Tad cries all the time when we, when we cut lemon, like lemongrass. Peel off any loose bits. This is known as the usable portion. This is what a cook uses from lemongrass. This is potpourri, I don't know, compost, all that good stuff, okay? Um, so galanga, all I'm gonna do, oh, you have a nice shot there, Ali. I'm just gonna slice galanga really thin. Don't peel galanga, all right? Don't peel any of this stuff. So I'm just trying to get as much surface area as possible, okay? I'm just trying to get as much surface area. I have chicken stock going here, and then, <laughs> uh, shit, I peeled it. It's okay, you're gonna be fine. It's just one extra step, Sarah, don't worry. Um, so in order to make soup stock, I have a box stock. I'm going to fortify a box stock. Don't, don't, don't judge me, all right? All right. Uh, I got kids and dogs and some stuff. So um, you have the, you, I'll send you the recipe for the actual, um, the, the non-box version of the recipe, but I like this version. Lemongrass, because we are making soup family, please don't overthink slicing this. Just slice it into very thin pieces and um, fortify the stock, all right? In Thailand, we would eat this right out of the soup, even though it's reedy and tough. Look at that. Okay. Um, uh, here in the States, sometimes restaurants take it out because people are like, oh my God, that's really bothering my teeth. I'm like, calm down. Okay. So if you want to be OG, leave it in there. If, you want, if, it, if, it, if you're serving like young people and you're like, oh, they might not like it, just, just strain it out. Thai chilies, baby. Um, it used to be like the third hottest chili in the world. It's obviously not anymore. It's probably like the sixth because there's so many. Okay. No, I don't need to look down because you, you don't need to. After your thousand time cooking, you don't have to do that. So um, how many of the one chili will bring a nice warmth to four cups of soup? That's how hot Thai chilies are. So I'll just take a knife and just pound it just so I could break open a little bit, bit of it. So, um, so the soup can kind of infuse. Um, the last of the Trinity friends, is this. This is called Thai mukrut leaf or Thai kafir lime leaf. They look like two leaves stuck together. Uh, and uh, what we can do is, um, yeah, we got some green ones and red ones right now. So you're growing some Myers. That's great. So well, what I'm going to do, because it's soup stock, I'm not overthinking it. I'm just going to tear, okay, so they can, you know, ooh, give me their uh, essential oils. That's it. Now, I'm going to give you the restaurant hack that's not in the re recipe now. To make a uh, uh, muy delicioso soup, uh, break up some garlic, okay? I'm leaving it on the skin and everything. Throw that in there. And here's the secret that restaurants won't tell you. They use uh, because you guys are giving money to a good cause. There it is right there. Chicken powder. Yo, super delicious. Man, you can smell it power yeah you know what in the restaurant i used to run restaurants um and we would secretly call it chicken power so it's it's a granulated powder that's all it is but it's got concentrated chicken um and it's also basically just has a, a lot of flavor in it if you're like crazy scared of msg don't use that all right 
I ain't scared. All right. How did I cut the peppers? I just smashed them, um, Al or AJ. I just smashed them so they break slightly to, so the soup can get in and get the heat and push out. That's all I did. So, so that's, um, can't do MSG. I totally understand. I'm just saying I am down with MSG and I ain't mad at it. Okay? Uh, fight me if you want. But anyway, uh, I'm just giving you um, the secret the restaurants do. I've just made Thai chicken stock. Right, if you wanted to make one from home, the Trinity, no, the, the garlic was not part of the Trinity, the chili wasn't either, I'm so sorry. This is the Trinity, if I confused you. Mary, oh, I like this chat screen. Lemongrass, galanga, kaffir lime leaf is the Trinity. Everything else is uh, a partridge on a pear tree, makes more deliciousness, but that's it. This is the base of curry paste, this is the base of soup, this is the base of a lot of uh, Thai dishes. Ali had a question. Um, you know what, for about a quart, of, for, I'm only going to do about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of chicken powder. You don't need a lot. Um, it really stretches quite a bit. Um, so soup stock is done. I'm going to let that boil so uh, it, it really infuses all the aromatic qualities. Um, and uh, Deb says I have coming from Amazon. Oh, you got some cool stuff. Excellent. You're going to make your, I don't know what that word is. Um, also, can, can, can find most of this stuff, especially stores, for sure, stock. You're going to make stock. Excellent. Um, okay, so should we be following along or cooking or just watching? Totally up to you. As long as you're all prepped out, I think you should cook with me. If you have to sit there and, like, you know, cut and prep, you're going to miss a lot of the nuances. Just watch the video again, but I'm going to leave it up to you. Um, I'm happy to do whatever you guys want. Another tip about the Trinity. If you cut all the Trinity items, right, fresh, stick them in a zippy bag or a zip or a vacuum bag and freeze them. The Trinity freezes phenomenally because it doesn't have a lot of moisture. It's not like basil or cilantro that dies. Does that make sense? So, so there it is. I will upload a link to the video right after the class, probably tomorrow morning. So, so that's it, Al. If you want to see. Guys, that's all the soup looks like, okay? Now I'm gonna let that simmer for about, you know, 15, 20 minutes and let that go. If I had a chicken carcass, that would be excellent. All right, um, that's it on soup stock. We'll, we'll, we're gonna come back and finish the soup in a little bit. I'm gonna move on to pineapple fried rice, okay? Are you guys cool with that? Man, this is moving fast. I can only find dried kaffir leaves, that's great. Dried kaffir leaves will work just fine, right? And if you don't have kaffir leaves, I don't want you not to make this dish. Does that make sense? I would still make that, okay? Um, all right, what is this? Who lives in the pineapple under the sea? Allie, <laughs> do you even? Very good, excellent. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. Um, my soup reduced down quite a bit, eight cups down to a little. Yeah, you might, wanna, um, you might want to bring water back into it. It might be a little too concentrated. So uh, don't let your uh, soup reduce more than about a cup. Anything more than that might be a little too intense. Uh, how long would you store, boil the stock? Um, if, if on a box stock, uh, because you're just kind of extracting aromatics, uh, 30 minutes. You don't need to do more than that. That's a good question, guys. Thank you. I don't have the Trinity items on the list. Um, so, so again, if you can find the dries, I would do it. But if not, this tube still will be delicious, food, by the way. Okay. Uh, love the dog. That's Halo, by the way, our, our Maligator. It's not true. That is actually a bad way because this Malinois is the most chill Malinois in the world. All right, let me show you how to cut a pineapple into a pineapple bowl. How does that sound? Okay, firstly, that works. Look at that. We can see everything. First cut, my friends, um, I'm going to leave the fronds on and then just cut this pineapple right in half lengthwise. I'm heating up my Titan pan, by the way, because we're going to get right into the wall. So half this way. I'm going to find the other half uh, this way. Okay, and watch, falls right apart. Okay, uh, I'm not going to use the whole thing right now. I'm going to, I'll cut that later for the kids. Now, uh, choking up on the knife. Knife skills class will be epic if you want to be a good cut. Okay, uh, Titan Pan, I will talk about the pan uh, when I get in there. Thank you very much. Um, sub for lemongrass is um, if you had dried lemongrass, if you had kefir or lemongrass, you you can sub one for the other okay if you want you could try some dried lemon lime rind but you know what invest the time and find some dried lemongrass out there it will change the way you cook all i'm doing friends is staying about a quarter inch inside the pineapple without piercing through um, so i'm hollowing it out to, to carve a bowl okay 
So once I'm in from the side, okay, I've done the sides, right? The frame. Now I'm gonna go from the middle and growing lemongrass is really fun and easy too. All right, I'm growing some, but it's not ready. Don't worry about it. You know what, it's all good. So then I come from the middle and watch, I get my first wedge. Then I come from the middle again. I'm just basically coming from the middle out to find that first cut and I've got a wedge. Now that I've got a wedge, all I've got to do again is um, kind of make sure I cut, I'm cutting through the ribs. I'm going to take my knife, slide it this way. And then all I'm doing is finding angles. I'm just finding wedges constantly and they pop right out. Look at that. So boom. So in about three or four motions, I've cut out a pineapple bowl. Super simple. All right. Lemongrass is the, is the tube isn't as good. Yeah. You know what though? If you had the tube, use it very sparingly like just a, a drop because it is very, very concentrated. So I'm going to use that for the plate. Um, good stuff. This, this question and answer thing is working, Ali. Don't you think? I think it's totally working. So I'm going to leave that here for the bowl for later. Uh, let's get into cooking. Wild a lot. Love pineapple cuts. Okay. Speaking of, you reminded me. Um, I, need it. I need the pineapple for the rice. So I'm cutting out the ribs. Uh, this is the chef's choice. Um, uh, I, I won't put the ribs in the dish. I'll actually uh, either infuse stuff with it or eat it myself or feed it um, to, to my dogs. Don't, I'm not, I didn't really mean that, okay? So, uh, so I have just dicing pineapple, boom, just like that. Let's talk about the rest of the mise en place. Um, French word, we gotta, we gotta learn that one because I'll say that one a lot. I'm not trying to be fancy, okay? Um, love the pineapple cuts. Okay, cool, it is super simple. Uh, mise en place, the only thing you need to know here is um, I've got ginger, shallots, garlic. You already know what that is. This is Chinese sausage. If you don't have it, any smoked meat product, if you're a vegetarian, that's fine too. But you can stay there, Allie. That's what the package looks like. Chinese sausage. This camera's working out. Isn't it clean? It's so much cleaner. I'm sorry, people from last week's class. No, I'm not. It was free. Uh, <laughs> all right. So yeah, Chinese sausage, uh, keep them in the fridge. They're cured. You can eat them. They're, uh, they're delicious. My favorite thing in the whole world. And then um, first time using dried shrimp, we will be using these for pad thai as well. They are uh, bay shrimp and they are also um, uh, fermented and dried. So there you go. Store these in the freezer. These don't belong outside. They'll oxidize, they'll get really gross. Freeze them or throw them in uh, anyone you want to prank's car <laughs> and they're hosed forever, all right? The only other thing you need to know is uh, curry powder. Common curry powder, nothing too fancy, okay? Uh, dried shrimps, umami, yes they are. Dried shrimps are super umami. So, um, there we go, I'm ready to cook. Titan pan, really quick. I think I've cracked a brand new one out of the box. Um, Titan pan, 11 inches uh, wide. Um, it's nonstick and stainless steel. I designed this pan, if you really went deep, the, the metal grid is higher than the nonstick surface. So food touches the metal grid and browns, but the nonstick under it kind of keeps everything moving. Also very safe for metal. Allie, was that a question or anything like that? Uh, I think the kids are home. They should come in and, and hang out. So shove, so shove for shelf, shelf for allergies on the dried shrimp, 86. Just 86 it and you're gonna be fine, okay? Uh, okay, how would I get one? Uh, um, oh my God, I'm sorry. I don't wanna be a commercial, I'm so sorry but I'm gonna say it once and I'm only gonna say it once, okay? It's www.titanpan.com. That's all I'm gonna say it, titanpan.com. That's all I'm gonna say, it. done, okay? Let's go back, it's about you and it's about cooking, okay? So Titan Pan is getting crazy hot. You don't need to walk. I am so like not a walk guy, unless you're trying to build a relationship with a walk, name it, make it part of your family. It's not that necessary. Um, American stoves are flat. Right, so we need pans that are flat bottoms to get more heat. So that's just how. Say it more than once. I, I, I'm not gonna say it again. You're not gonna make me say it, Mary. I'm sorry. Okay. Um. So full blast. Oh, I turn up the heat full blast. My mise en place is ready. I have rice that's fresh cooked, and I'm gonna start cooking. Uh, what do I want to use? I'm gonna use um this guy, my my spoon. So Ali's probably gonna come in now just to capture what's happening in the walk. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, queen reference. Flat bottom girls. You make the you make the cooking girl go. There you go. Excellent. Um, all right. So once you come in, I'm gonna hit the hood. As long as if you guys, if this gets loud, you just tell me, and uh, I will stop. All right, Allie. If your arms get tired, let me know. No, no, it's my fault. 
just a little bit of oil because there's non stick. I'm using grapeseed. I love grapeseed oil because it gets bloody hot. Um, order of operations, okay? Uh, I think about what can I put in first that will help give flavor, and that would be Chinese sausage. I want to render that. Yes, yeah, six burners plus a griddle. Uh, we don't mess around here, okay? Six burners plus a griddle. So I'm just gonna get that moving. Everything you put in the pan cools the pan. Does that make sense? So that's why I'm, I'm always going at full blast, okay? That's moving very, very nicely. Now, aromatics, uh, shallots, ginger, garlic, dried shrimp. In my opinion, dried shrimp can go in now because uh, it's only gonna get crispier and more delicious, all right? Let's get that going. And again, keep it moving. And any skillet would be fine here, family. It doesn't need to be a fancy, fancy pan, okay? Uh, now, fried rice. Can I teach you a secret? I have fresh cooked rice. In the, in the recipe, it would say uh, day-old rice. Do you, want me to, do you want me to give you like an OS moment? Like, you know, when you're like, OS, oh, you know what I'm talking about. I didn't make the rice in time. Oh, snap. You know what word I'm really talking about? There might be kids out there, so I'm going to behave. If you're like, oh, no, fresh rice uh, pan don't play well together, then use the aid of egg. I'm going to show you how to do that. So push the egg around, okay? And, I'm, and the recipe does not have egg, guys. I'm adding this to give you yet one more great tip to not have rice stick to walk. So spread that egg around like a landing pad, like a bed, and watch this. If, if you have hot rice like I do, hot rice will be absorbed by egg, watch this, and then coated with egg, and then kept from sticking to pan, all right? And I'm using egg anyway because look, I've got, Yo, I've got meat in here anyway. So this isn't a vegan rice or a veggie, which is nothing wrong with that. But check it out, look. I'm gonna toss, and look, no stick, no sticky, all right? No sticky because the egg helps quite a bit, all right? If your arms are getting tired, Ali, I totally get it. You need a little break, all right? That, I know you are. She is big, strong, and tough. Uh, 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 this pan is 11 inches, all right? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a moment. I learned that, that walk trick from a Hong Kong chef. Who, who that dude was the man like for real okay now i put the shrimp in late because i don't want them to overcook i'm going to season now you can you want to rest your arms for two seconds ali um everyone sees what's happening in the pan hot sour salty sweet right uh salty maggie okay maggie i didn't i didn't add anything yet just a little maggie sauce not a lot a different salty fish sauce this is more of a punchy like a very uh, uh, sharp salt. Maggie is a sweet, mellow salt, if that makes any sense. Okay. Someone's asking what you just added. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I added shrimp just now. So in the pan is the aromatics, is the sausage. The shrimp was the last thing before Allie pulled away, guys. I'm so sorry. All right. So um, I usually do the shrimp first to get the aroma. That's cool, but my pan was like really cranking and I didn't want rubbery shrimp. So that, that's, what the whole, that's why I didn't do that. So this dish is not spicy. If I wanted to do spicy, I could do this or dried chili, but I'm gonna add curry powder to give it some color. Um, and then uh, just a little bit of color there and a lot of interest as well. And then acid is gonna come from the form of pineapples, right? So there it is. Um, now, yeah, you wanna come in and I'll plate this with you. So Ali's gonna give you a nice close up of what's happening right now. So we're gonna go back into the pan. So the curry powder is going to start to kind of color things, add some interest, the curry is gonna to toast. And again, watch me toss this thing um, and it's not, you're gonna get no stick. So I'm just gonna to gently toss and you're gonna scrape the pan down. This is gonna be a super light and fluffy and I'm gonna do scallions now, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring a little cilantro to the game in a little bit. Uh, Sorry, yeah, yeah, it's all in the recipe too, by the way, the, how much I put in here. That's why I didn't tell you. You know, curry powder, Deb, just a little bit of curry powder. So um, that's perfect, Ali. I'm gonna plate for you now, so. Oh yeah, oh, I forgot one thing. I forgot a little sugar. I want, a, remember, Thai food is all about balance. And I was like, wait a minute, I've got all my savory. I've got all these aromatic qualities. 
I just want to punch a suit. And that's how it works in the Thai kitchen. So I'm going to bring the bowl to you then, Allie, or where you are. I'm going to live there, okay? Uh, and then watch what I do. Turn this off. This by itself could just be served in a big old bowl, and your kids would go crazy, and your partners would go crazy, and your, your friends would go crazy. But check it out. You're, you're using pineapple anyway. And I'm using a bowl on purpose because I want it to overflow. I want that whole abundanza situation, right? I want it to be like, oh, my God, that looks so delicious. I want a lot of it. Okay? Uh, and I want it everywhere. But I'm gonna, I want to get credit for my protein. So I'm going to put the shrimp there and the shrimp there. And then I'm going to do a little final garnish. It'll be a little scallion. Uh, little cilantro sprigs on top. Yo, you just made pineapple fried rice. Go, oh, yeah. There it is. Right there. It's that simple. Okay. So, um, so um, any questions? Would you eat that? Uh, super simple, guys. Thai cooking is not difficult. Oh, that shrimp went bye-bye. Man down. Sorry about that. Um, so can I deliver to NYCE? Yeah, dude. Uh, I would love that. This is my favorite fried rice, by the way, because uh, it's got so much complexity and flavor. And, and there it is. Yes, Ali, you have a question there? Uh, yeah, if you had turmeric, right? Yeah, you can absolutely go easy on the turmeric and back that up um, with a little pepper and a little salt just to give it something because turmeric is very sharp and strong on its own, guys. But yes, you absolutely could use turmeric and you get the credit for superfood, even though you're eating sausage and fried rice. So, so there it is. Okay, I'm going to put this away. One dish done. We're going to move right on to the next, okay? I'm going to finish my soup now. And then we'll finish with pad thai and we're done. And we're gonna do some Q and A. We'll let Ali get a break. She's been working so hard all day. We did Food Network Kitchen earlier. Um, looks delicious, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Cheryl, thank you. Um, thanks, family, oh, I missed that. Uh, how many varieties of curry powder? Uh, there, are, there, are, there are a few, but if you just is the generic old curry powder that is turmeric forward, where you don't have to overthink it, right there, okay? Uh, let's do this. Let's go to soup. So, uh, soup stock is back. I'm going to taste it. And what I'm looking for is, on the nose, I want to know that there's lemongrass and galanga in here. And I get that on the nose. Mm. There is already a good amount of salt in here because I'm using a box stock. So don't forget to get, give yourself credit for that versus using the making your own because if you made your own for my recipe you'd probably have to back up back down on fish sauce which i'm gonna do here so um let's bring this to the boil and let's finish off our soup mise en place special mise en place you already know chicken power you don't need um very critical ingredient now family chili paste in soybean oil also known as num prick pow in Thai, which means roasted chili paste. In this, oh my God, this is delicious. Shrimp, shallots, garlic, onions, chilies, stewed down ever so slowly until the sweetness uh, basically takes over. So num prick pao, all right, chili paste, so good. Everything else you know, straw mushrooms. You could use can, you could use white buttons, you can use creminis. Don't use high flavor mushrooms like shiitakes or any of the fancy French mushrooms. We'll blow it out. You want a base mushroom that doesn't have a lot of flavor. So the flavor, the soup takes over, okay? Um, Deb is Amazon queen. She found that from Amazon. That's pretty amazing. Cabbage for a little roughage and that's it. So watch, this will take very, very quick. Um, I'm just gonna put chicken in. So Ali, do you wanna join me here just for a minute? Um, props to Ali guys, give Ali, Ali the big old props. Oh, please, are you kidding me? It's so worth it, you know, because A, you're awesome, and B, the, 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 the picture quality is killer. Um, yes, one of the few times I'll actually use chicken breasts. I hate chicken breasts. Everyone says, thanks, Allie. Go, Allie. Family Larimer, go, Allie. All right, so I'm going to get the chicken in. Notice the garlic and all that stuff still in there. I like that rustic look. I really do. Straw mushrooms, you can't really overcook them, so why not throw them in right now? Now, um, I'm going to put the cabbage in last. So the things you need to understand is coconut milk, uh, shake well before use. 
this is one of the few times I'm actually going to allow you to do that. When we make curry together, don't you dare. Okay. So uh, church, I'm going to use a church key because it's a very efficient tool for this job. Let me put it down so I don't splash myself. So I'm going to uh, church key this. Um, I need to pour an event. So let's go in there. All right. Uh, did I say mushrooms are canned? Yes, these straw mushrooms are canned. Okay. So uh, the balance of creaminess is really kind of up to you. Uh, Allie likes a very um, coconut forward soup. I like it. I like it. I like it 50 50. All right. So now that's looking awesome. I'm use that. It's coconut. It's coconut, it's it coconut it forward. Uh, chili paste and soybean oil. I'm being very generous with it because it's got phenomenal flavor. And um, I might find a whisk. Alley outfits our kitchen so well. Um, I'm gonna find a whisk and look, look at that beautiful color. That red, those red kind of chili oil droplets start to express themselves. Okay. And then, um, and then for seasoning, very simple. Okay. Uh, why, would you ever replace chicken breast for thigh? This is one of the few places, fish sauce guys, I'm actually gonna be okay with chicken breast because thigh, um, I love that it's very meaty and very kind of like dark meat tasting. This needs a light touch. So this needs a very light touch. Uh, last thing I'm gonna need guys is um, lime juice. Just a little lime juice. And uh, if you are cooking for yourself and you're not like sweating the kids, um, uh, like not liking spice, then I would add a few more chilies in here. And if you're like a super, super spicy head, I would actually slice chilies and put them in there. And, and again, thank you very much, uh, Victoria. Just a pinch of sugar. You're gonna notice in Thai cuisine, we really like that balance. So, um, man, I just made Tom Kakai. Yeah, that's a Rogan. There's Halo. Halo is, stop surfing. Stop shopping, stop shopping. Cut it out. So, yeah. Can you substitute lime, lime with lemon? Uh, totally. Uh, I'm okay with that. It's gonna taste a little different, but totally okay with that. I uh, needed a little more salt. That's it, y'all. Some uh, kakai. Let me bowl it up in a in a in a glass bowl, just so you can see what it looks like. This is when I would add cabbage, and all I'm gonna do is I'll take a small wedge of cabbage. And I, I want it large, like one inch-ish uh, to half inch. See how there's a variation? Because they're going to wilt a little bit, but they're gonna wilt fast. And if you ever steam cabbage or had the flavor of cooked cabbage, it's so sweet to me. And that's why I like it. It also adds just a little bit of roughage in there. And I'm gonna throw that in. And I'm gonna go back to my scallions and cilantro for garnish. Throw that right in there. Guys, you've just made coconut chicken soup. That's it. I mean, Thai food is really that simple. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you. I want to like pretend I'm a magician and I'm amazing, but it's really just training, you know? So uh, I'll let Ali get a tight on this in a second when I come to you, and then I'm going to show you how I would garnish this. So, so I'll put that there. Is that a good place? You tell me. What I want you to do as you serve this is take a little bit of the oil, put it, float it on top. And if, if you'll indulge me, one more garnish note. Stay there if your arms aren't too tired, Ali. You're doing great. All right, I know you're, you're big and strong and tough. Kaffir lime leaf, fold it in half, roll it up really, really tight like a, you went to college. You know what I'm talking about. I don't remove the spines because they're such a delicate leaf. You don't have, and watch, take, a, take your knife. And then this in Thai we call soy, right? You're basically doing the most delicate chiffonade ever, okay? And then you make, you make these little tiny, little tiny dust with that. And then you're sending that while it's aromatic and you're gonna drink that. And uh, that's it. Allie, we eating good tonight. Yeah. That's all I'm saying right there. Oh, my God. Okay. Yo, two dishes down. Uh, I'm going to reset. Uh, I did get the Chinese sausage recipe for lap chung. Yep, that's it. I uh, wasn't sure how much I needed to cook in the fried rice. Not too much. 
every bite, every spoon of fried rice should have like uh, one or two pieces of sausage. But it's kind of like bacon. If you're a bacon head, put as much as you want. I mean, who cares? You know what I mean? So that's a good question though, guys. Um, uh, wow, last dish. Can you believe it? We're cracking through this, guys. Um, okay. Yes, question. Cilantro is absolutely used in Thai food. Um, coriander, as it's called sometimes. Uh, we use... We use the, the w w oh wait, what's cilantro? I just, I blew it, coriander. I was gonna say, what's the seed called? It's called coriander. Um, and then the leaf's called cilantro. Uh, and then Thai people will actually use the root. We'll actually pull the root out of the ground and we'll, uh, and we'll use it in, uh, in curries and stuff. So, okay, last dish, I'm going for it. Uh, would I ever use rice noodles in there? Heck yes. You can make any soup into a meal by adding noodles. You can even add cold cooked rice and cook it in there and make porridge. So that you so for sure, y'all, you can do whatever you want. All right, last dish. Let's do this. Uh, pad Thai mise en place. What do you need to know about Pad Thai? Um, specialty ingredients. What type of boards am I using? Uh, this is a um, booze board, which co commercially available. You'll like that. Um, and this is a, a one of a kind live edge slab board, uh, family owned business. Uh, can you see the one of a kind logo? And they make these, they make our super giant um, live edge table, live edge cutting boards. This is a six foot cutting board, it's crazy to see. This is a six foot long cutting board. You're only seeing uh, the edge of it right there. So, so there it is. So there you go. Yeah, I know, exactly. We only cleaned what you see. That's it, everything else is a mess. No, I'm joking. Yeah, go ahead, Ali. Jared, uh, if you're doing the tamarind from block, I want you to take um, about, um, let's say four to one by volume, four times tamarind block to water. So if you have about a tablespoon of tamarind block, take four tablespoons of water, smash it together and strain it out like the YouTube video shows you, okay? Dry shrimp, you know, uh, new ingredient, sweetened radish. Okay, uh, this is daikon radish, the big long white radish. And uh, you couldn't find the sweet, don't worry about it. Just, I would omit it, don't use the salty because the salty is too salty. This just is gonna add a lot, of, an extra layer of crunch to authentic pad thai. And then a savory baked tofu. This is the stuff in the vacuum pack bag and I'm just sliced it thin. You could use fried, you could use anything that's in the vacuum pack bag, don't use tofu and water. Don't use fresh daikon. As well, Marie, you don't want to use fresh daikon. Are the kids good? You want to check on them? Okay, sounds good. Allie's all over. Couldn't find baked tofu? Just find teriyaki tofu, soy sauce tofu at Gelson's, any of those, any of the fancy schmancy markets. I'm going to make pad thai sauce with you, okay? I'm going to show you how simple it is, okay? I'm going to do it restaurant style, too. Um, let's make pad thai sauce, okay? First thing I'm going to do is um, there's so many ingredients in this. As you cook Thai food more, you'll be able to decipher flavors. So as you begin, this is how I want you to begin kind of cooking by feel. You know sweet, okay? You already know what sweet is. I'm making a lot of Pad Thai sauce, just so visually you can see what's going on. You know sweet. Uh, as you know, uh, fish sauce this is important. I'm gonna go fish sauce to sugar. My family's grocery store actually, we closed this year because my mom retired and so did our restaurants, uh, unfortunately. Um, so, all uh, right, you know salt, you know sweet. You also know acid. I believe that you have your lime juice um, uh, tongues dialed in because you know that, okay? The new ingredients for you are going to be tamarind. So um, I want you to, when you cook with this guys at home, I want you to do this. I want you to take, take a spoon. This is my house, so I am double dipping and I'm cross contaminating because it's just going into my house, okay? I want you to taste tamarind. It is a sweet and sour. It's not a sour puckerish sour. It's a very kind of lovely a fruity sour, all right? Um, and then rice vinegar might be kind of new to you in terms of using it. And do me a favor, friends, uh, buy unseasoned rice vinegar, okay? 
Um, white unseasoned rice vinegar. Seasoned rice vinegar has sugar and salt in it. I don't want that. And I'm only eyeballing this, guys, because I've made this dish, um, uh, gosh, probably 20,000 times in my life. So that, that's why. Uh, now, here's the twist. I like to add a little sriracha in my pad thai. If you don't like spice, don't worry about it. That's going to go in there. Uh, <laughs> a little more sriracha is going to go in there. Um, and that's it. That's pad thai sauce. And don't you dare try to make pad thai sauce every time you want to eat pad thai. If you know you're going to be making this dish a lot, just multiply the, the sauce recipe by four, six, eight. Put it in a jar or just use a, a deli cup. Uh, chefs, we live and die by these, okay? So there it is. Um, I only have the bottle of lies, David says. It's okay, <laughs> David. Most people do, so don't even worry about it. Oh, um, Simran, Indian tamarind is more dense and concentrated than Thai. So if you're using Indian tamarind, you need to dilute it probably three times, two to three times and add a pinch of sugar to balance out the lack of sweetness that Thai tamarind has. How does that sound? Can you freeze it? Um, yes, you could backpack this, you could freeze it 100%, all right? Uh, out of the fridge, because there's salt and stuff in here, you're probably good for a month or two, all right? Probably longer, but that's probably the safest I probably should tell you. If that makes any sense. And the last uh, ingredient, guys, is, this, is the noodles. All right. Um, rice stick noodles. Dry rice stick. Uh, soak them in warm water for about 20 to 30 minutes and become this. I have paprika as well, by the way, and I'm going to use it. So don't worry. I'm going to use the paprika. Okay. You soak it in water, warm, not hot. You don't want to cook. Um, you, you, you cannot soak these too long. If your water temperature does not exceed a warm bath, because then they cool and you can stick them in the fridge. You soak them too long if you get beyond 180 degrees, because that's when you're actually cooking the starches um, in the noodle. Oh, Alton Brown moment, nerd time. There you go. You like that? Uh, how long all these shelf stable? All of these shelf stable ingredients should last six months, at least to a year. Okay. Um, all right. How do you keep them from sticking? Oh, I'm going to show you in the pan. You can, all right, uh, the, first, well, the first way that they don't stick, Myers, is you don't soak them in too hot a water. That's the first tip right there. You want them just like this. Let's get into the pan. I'm ready. I just, man, kids are happy. Everyone's happy, Allie? Good. They're taking baths and relaxing. They're not home yet? They're still out partying? Lord have mercy. Um, okay, um, I store my sauces outside in a cool, dark place. I don't even bother fridging them. It would take up like a quarter of the fridge. So cool, dark place. My Asian pantry makes Allie crazy. That's all I could say. All right, let's do this. Uh, yes, yeah, I ain't playing. Um, all right, um, oil. And uh, this, Allie, when you're ready, I might bug you to do this handheld because there's a lot of nuance here. There's a lot of nuance in, in the pan. So uh, yes, yeah, so come on in when you're ready, Allie. Order of operation is pretty critical, guys. Can we see the inside of your fridge? Yeah, it's pretty clean right now, totally. All right, so I'm gonna go chicken first this time. Now, because in the recipe, it might say garlic and aromatics. I don't need that much. But uh, this pan gets really hot. So I'm gonna use the chicken to cool the pan down a little bit. Notice the sear that we're seeing already. Avocado oil, yes, absolutely. Any of those high temperature oils, okay? If this fan gets too loud, guys, just tell me, okay? Um, all right. Tofu. Uh, radish. Dried shrimp. Now garlic, because I wanted the garlic not to burn, okay? So now I'm going to get that in there. Start to sear it around. And I just want all of these flavors to marry together. I want the chicken about medium, so a little steer on the outside, but still raw uh, in the middle. Peanut oil is fine. Any of those oils, just don't use extra virgin olive oil. Don't use sesame oil. High temperature, low flavor, friends. Oh, uh, you're all skeptical about tamarind. I like the block to soak it up. Yeah, that's fine. Just play with it. Just don't make sure it's not too acid. All right, now here's very important. I'm looking at the bottom of the pan and it's bone dry because I only use oil as I need. I'm going to put a little oil. And I'm going to show you a hot side, cold side trick. Push all your ingredients to one side 
and pull up your oil on the on an empty pan side. And then I'm gonna crack your eggs right into that open side. All right, because I want the eggs not to be basically scrambled and pick up all the other things. Uh, yes, you can use metal utensils in the Titan pan, by the way. Uh, I want eggs to be eggs. I want to know what they are. I want the whites and the yolks to be lacy. If that makes any sense? And then I bring them together. There you go. And here's the secret, okay? Uh, what did I sprinkle in the pan? Nothing really, just the egg. I just cracked the egg in there. Uh, noodles have to be wet out of the water, okay? So I'm gonna put the noodles in now. And uh, I'm gonna reserve this soaking liquid. I'm gonna need it later, okay? And then now I'm gonna use the noodles, get the noodles to the bottom of the pan and all the protein to the top. So I'm turning this pan over on itself and letting, using the surface area and I'm scraping all these bits and I'm not worried because I know my pan can handle it, all right? <laughs> yes, that pan can handle your metal pan. Allie, do your infomercial voice. It can, who wants to hear Allie do her infomercial voice? Um, all right. Exactly right. Um, if you let the noodles, cast iron, don't use cast iron here because it's a little too sticky. All right. I can't really hear. Okay, I'm going to go down. Yeah, yeah, this pan won't scratch. That's, I'm dead serious. All right. Now the noodles are starting to soften. Okay. No, this won't catch the pan because the metal grid on top is catching the metal utensil and it's not touching the actual nonstick part. That's what I'm looking for. Yes, the stainless steel mesh uh, matrix that I designed. Anyway, uh, these noodles are soft now. They went from very dense and very kind of plasticky to soft. Uh, is there anything you we shouldn't cook in the Titan pan? Oh God, the shrimp. You totally reminded me. Let's put it in now. Thank you so much. You made me feel the shrimp. Um, so you're like, oh, 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 shoot. Watch, I'm not worried. I'm going to use the metal. I'm going to have the shrimp touch the actual metal now. So I'm pushing everything up against the side. That's Teacher's that's pet. The yeah. Yeah, yeah. You basically passed. Whoever thanks there are reminding me for the shrimp. But I'm not freaking out. Okay. Um, now you're like, where's the paprika go? Uh, I like, I really like, um, paprika for a little punch of color because American pad thai, the pan is oven safe. American pad thai uh, has always been made with paprika since the, the 60s and 70s when, when my family and other families started Thai food here. Um, so, so that's how you want it right there. All right, it's getting there guys. I'm just working the paprika in. Okay, last tip for you. Yeah, pad thai is complicated, I get it. But the more you put into it, the more you understand it, the more you're gonna be good at it, okay? Um, two, two choices. I have a fork in the road here. I want to taste these noodles and I want to look for, I want them moist, not wet. So they're still a little wet, so I'm going to let them cook a little bit. I'm going to taste. Mm. Excellent. I have the flavor I want, but, you know, smoked um, is going to be a little intense, by the way, just so you know. And then I'm going to use a little of the cooking liquid. Any Italian Americans out there, that whole pasta water thing? Um, you stole it from us Chinese. I'm just going to say that right now. I need a little more sugar. And that's it, guys. Allie, you want to pull back? I'm going to plate up. There it is. <laughs> uh, the Italians are like, no, we didn't. Um, okay. I'm always thinking about the moisture in my, uh, the, in my pad thai. I'm going to put um, uh, scallions now, guys, and reserve some for garnish. I'm always thinking as the pad thai is cooking, I'm never going to let it dry out in the pan. I always want to plate it right at that moment. It's still moist. Okay. Uh, so you can't, you can't let this go. Yeah. Allie, the, we're going to eat super good tonight. Oh, um, okay. So check it out. I'm going to plate it up now. Allie, do you want to meet me or you, you use, oh, you're good. I'm good. We have the best, we have the best team. Team Tila is the best. So, um, yeah, this is a lot of jokes tonight, which we love. Uh, you guys are a lot of jokes, non-kid friendly jokes that we love. But we're not going to say them because we love the kids. Um, pad ties up. Now, let me finish with the garnish. Uh, I need 
bean sprouts. So watch what I do, y'all. Team Teal forever, y'all. Um, there you go on one side. I need peanuts here. And then, yeah, this forum is great. This is a good team. I mean, I have, we're all on one uh, email thread together. So, uh, and then finally, I'm going to do a little uh, lime wedge garnish. I, look, I like, I like to go off center so I don't grab the seed pod, just so it looks sexy like that. So it's pure juice. I'll stick that in there. And uh, there you go. Pad tie, everybody. Um, what's a good peanut sub? Just don't use it. I would just totally 86 it and your son will be totally fine. So there you go. Let's pull back to the first position. Ali Tila, friends, we've made three dishes in 32 minutes. It's not over because that's the fun part. We're going to give out a little break, but I'm going to pull the camera now and we're actually going to chat. But um, that was, that was it. How crazy. Thai food super simple. You know what I mean? Uh, Ali, you have a question. Um, I want to know who the What is, what is, if what is she talking about? Pan, oh, if someone sprays oil in my Titan pan? Is that who you're talking about? You're talking to Lisa right now. Um, Deb, you can do this. It takes time. Yeah. Um, is she saying that someone like pre-sprayed the oil? Mm. Um, it wouldn't be bad at all. Cause yeah, Lisa knows, Lisa knows I love cooking oil. Cause uh, she used to own a cooking school. I used to teach for her. That's Lisa. Um, okay. You like my state puff poster. Thank you very much. I can't even believe you did this. So thankful. Um, so what group questions as I grab the laptop um, might we have? Uh, we've made tom kha chai, galanga soup. We've made pineapple fried rice. Uh, and we made pad thai, all in a matter of, of, of no time at all. So I'm going to leave that there. And um, I'm looking. <clears throat> Pull, Holy pineapple price presentation. Super simple. You can do it. We, we did it together, guys. It's super easy. Madras curry powder, 100%. That's a good question. Um, all right. Allie, um, you want to pass me that laptop? Why don't you do it? Uh, guys, I'm going to – how about a giant hand for Allie? Allie, you want to come take a bow? No, she doesn't? Okay, got it. Um, and then I'm going to grab – see how I do this here without hurting anything. Oh, can you knock that camera back? There you go. All right. So, friends, how are we doing? It's cool my Zachary helped me with the pad thai. It would say hi before bed. Yeah, I got to find you guys. So, all right, I'm going to do my, 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 two, my shout outs now. Um, I'm going here and I'm saying, Kathy Chu's disappeared. Hi, Melinda's iPad. Thank you, Josh and Crystal. If you have... Um, hi, Lisa, Phil Pot, how's it going? Al Joseph is eating and his family. So who, so if you have a child that needs to go to bed, who was that, by the way? Um, raise your hand if you have a, a, a question. And I've got to scroll through a ton of screens. There's a lot of us here. We just did a cooking class for 85 people. Um, so good on you guys. That's awesome. Yes, Michelle Boston, very good. Good, Sarah, excellent. Um, I'm going to scroll through. So keep your hand up if you have a child that wants to do a shout out. Cindy, I will. You're second. How's that? So Cindy, Ali, eat. Please eat. Okay, David, um, um, David asked to unmute. You may unmute. David, jump on in here, man. What's up, dude? What's your name? My name is Zachary, and I'm seven years old. Like hey, cooking? Zachary, seven years old. Oh, we have a daughter, Amaya, who's seven years old. I like cooking. I like to cook. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you like to cook more than our kids do. That's for sure. Well, it's nice to meet you. I hope you had fun today. And I hope mm -hmm. you uh, think about joining us again. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. we'll Thanks, see you Zachary. Class. We'll see bye, you some Chinese, Zachary and David. Take care. All bye, right. Bye-bye. All right, I'm going back to Cindy. You had a question. You may unmute. Anyway, whoever needs to go, before you guys go, I wanted to thank you very much. I hope this was fun. I will take any feedback that you have um, via uh, the email that I sent you. I'm going to be doing Chinese is in two weeks. Knife skills is the week after that. I mean, Japanese is the week after that. The knife skills. And if there's something that you guys are dying to do, um, let's find a way to do it. Um, I don't, 
I'll be home for a while. And uh, Ali knows that the more I have to do, the less crazy I get. So, all right, Cindy, talk to me. Well, my question is, I'm doing the Tom Ka and the Pad Thai. Yes. And I don't want the chicken breast to dry out in the soup. How do I time it? So, perfect question. I'm a nervous about that. You're going to hold the chicken breast to the absolute last second. And then you're going to drop it in <clears throat> right, right, right at service. It's going to turn from raw to opaque and you're going to serve it right away. And the nice thing about chicken breast in the soup is it usually won't dry out because it's surrounded by liquid all the time. So you're going to be good. In the pad thai, um, pretty much the same thing. I'm going to give you one more tip tonight. If you add a little cornstarch and oil in that chicken breast as it's raw before you put it in the pan, it's actually going to stay a little more moist. It's a nice Chinese cooking trick, which is I'm going to teach you in the Chinese class. So it keeps all proteins that go into the wok nice and um, moist. So there you go. Who's your friend behind you? <clears throat> um, sorry, you're on mute. So uh, anyway, if you ha put keep your hands up. I'm going to go around. Cindy, wait, who's your friend behind you? That's my daughter. She's 16. Oh. Hey, She's here you? begrudgingly. Oh, begrudgingly. Oh, yeah, kicking and screaming. <laughs> totally, totally get it. Um, thanks, Cindy. Uh, Thank you. All right. Who's next? Raise your hand if you have a question. I want to do uh, Sabrina Wolf. You may unmute. Go for it. Talk to hey. us. Thanks, uh, Chef Jet Tila. It's been really fun watching. Um, for the uh, pad thai, you know, we have the fresh noodles, the rice noodles yes. that are in the yes. fridge. Could you use those or would that not work out great? Great question. If you're using the fresh noodles for pad thai, you use them, the fresh noodles go right in. It's as if you've soaked them. Does that make sense? Okay, when we yes. soak the dry, it catches up right. to what the fresh are. So use them okay. right into the pan. Um, I also have a question from Sarah. What's the best way to reheat the pad thai? If you've done your job, the pad thai is going to get nice. It's going to hold this way. Um, don't judge me. Microwave. Airtight zip, zip, ziplock bag or a, um, or a uh, what do they call those? Um, containers, those uh, to-go containers, Allie. Um, Tupperware. Tupperware in a microwave is going to be the way to go. All right, put your hands up, guys. Thanks, Sabrina. I appreciate it. Someone's drinking wine. Good for you. Mary E is drinking wine. Allie, we need to be drinking wine. Okay, Sean Cotter, unmute. Talk to me, homie. Hi. Thank you again. Um, uh, my son and kids love the fried rice. It was. What's your What's your What are your kids' names? Rowan and Harper. Well, Here's Rowan here. What's up, brother? Hey. How's it going? I hope you guys had fun. Oh, you enjoyed the fried rice? Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Oh, you don't want to get in this? My best half. Come on. Um, Sean, any other questions, brother man? Um, if I can't find some of the ingredients around here, is there stuff I can order? Like, is there, do you recommend? For sure. If you don't mind just cobbling these orders together and waiting a few days, there's the only thing I couldn't find um was maggie sauce so actually no walmart had maggie sauce chili paste and soybean oil was available what? fish sauce was available so just do a deep google search a shopping who's she's trying to steal Rawr. um yeah you, you'll be able to find everything as long as you have the patience to get there brother I okay All right. Great. Thanks, thanks man um anyone else dude the suttons are eating they are going to town they are blasting good for you i'm proud of you guys um Michelle Bott, what's going on? I didn't know you were here. Uh, one of my colleagues from Schwann's. That's awesome. Uh, Stuart and Ann. Stuart, unmute. Talk to me, bro. Hey, how are you? I'm well, thank you very much. And who's next to you? This is my daughter, Sarah Ann. Hi, Sarah Ann. How are you? It's good to see you. Do you have a question, my friend? She, she wanted to know if your kids enjoy cooking with you? Uh, and Allie, if you might do a kids... kids enjoy cooking, they so our kids are are typical, don't like to cook. They only eat chicken nuggets. Um, so so yeah, no. That's not so it, it, what are they adventurous? What's, Amaya is a piping master. This is your mic. Amaya is great at baking with Allie. She pipes. Yeah, she baking. has the technical piping and baking skills. Um, but eating wise though, they, they're not adventurous at all. So. Um, so, so that's the deal. Sarah Ann, are, are, are you an adventurous eater? I would say so, mostly. That's I good. <laughs> that's she, good. Likes to, she likes to cook with me, so we were wondering oh. if you might do uh, a cooking class that would be geared towards kids or something. Yeah. Do you know what? This is our first cooking class ever outside of the test. 
We didn't even know we could do this a few weeks ago. So um, if you guys give me a thumbs up, if you think this is working, did you learn something? Did you have fun? Yeah. So yeah, guys. We love it. It's awesome. Double thumbs from Josh and Crystal. So yes. Yeah. So if this works, we're going to keep doing it. How's that sound? You guys are on the mailing list forever. You guys can opt out anytime you want. Um, thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one. Let's see. Um, how about another Thank you. A few. Thank you. Please. Um, all right. I'm going to keep pushing around. If you have your hands up, I'm going to find you. Uh, Jared, you may unmute. Talk to us, man. Allie, you want to stand next to me? Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talk to me, Jared. What's up? Hey, what's up, man? Nice to meet you. Nice that to meet you. Awesome. Thank all right. You. Um, so with, okay, just, I've watched all the Tamron Pace videos. I'm just, oh, totally yeah. so should I be taking three tablespoons of the actual Tamron Pace and then putting in the water? Uh, take three tablespoons of water and take about one tablespoon of Tamron block. Got it. Dilute, smash together and strain. That's how to play. Okay, That's perfect. how to play. Watch my Tamron video. Oh, his Tamron. Oh, do you want me to look at your Tamron Pace? Is that what you said, Allie? That sounds dirty. Can I see your tamarind paste? Oh, I didn't make it yet. I just oh, he I didn't make it yet. Okay. Taking the three blocks of oh. that was going to be a lot of tamarind. No, no, no. It's three times water, one times tamarind. Okay, thank um, you. All right, I'm going to scroll, Jared. Thanks a lot, brother man. Uh, if your hands are up, I'm going to find you. No, nope. all right, Corrine Jacobson. You may unmute. Ask a question. We'll do this for a few more minutes, and then I got to clean all these dishes. I, I love, I, I just want you to know, I love this show. Thank you. Show Thanks. Is so great. Um, and the question is, is that um, when we can't find something or other, is there yes. a, something that we could use differently? Um, you know what? It's a broad question. So if you do yeah, have, when you get yourself into the cooking mode and you, and before your meal planning, why don't you drop me an email and say, Hey Jet, this is what I'm going to make. And, um, it, what can I sub in? If, if there's something on the top of your mind, I'm happy to, to answer that. Well, I went to two Oriental markets. Couldn't find yeah, you try to cobble things. it all together. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. was hard. Believe it or not, most of these things you can actually omit. If you have some things, you'll be okay with the others. So um, next time, send me a dish on email and go, what are my criticals? How's that? And I'll say okay. what your criticals are. How does that work? Cool. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Kareem. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. We love having you. Um, okay, um, screen three of five. Okay, um, Marian Mendez, you may unmute. Talk to us. Hello, Sawadee so Kab. So uh, that's Thai for hello, Sawadee so Kab. Um, I just wanted to know, could you give us a Penang curry recipe? I love Penang and I haven't had it since I've been in Thailand. Well, since I moved out of Thailand. Sounds good. Um, Marian, I want you to go to YouTube and go look up Ready Jet Cook. Ali and I made a video on how to make our Penang. And Penang is one of the dishes that uh, how, how I, we courted each other. We're so old, we say court. That's right, she married me for my Penang curry. So Miriam and everybody go to Ready Jet Cook on YouTube and you guys will see a ton of our content. And then you'll be like, why the hell did I take this class? How does that sound? Thank um, you, thank you. Thanks Miriam. We're gonna go to Marcy uh, Cuevas. Please unmute and talk to us. Um, a few more minutes, so we're looking pretty good. Yes, Marcy. Hi. Hi. So, so I have a question about the knife skills class, actually. I've got, we're signed up for that, and my daughter, yep. 14, who's shyly here hovering behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you do a Facebook video about knives for kids. Yes. She's a little old for the, the, uh. You're, she's too old for the, for the, for the kid knife. So right, what is so but when she uses yeah. our knives, they're like enormous and so she's like kind of afraid so i was ah. had, a, had a suggestion for something that would be good for her i am not a big dude right i still wield a 12 inch knife it's all about the technique and in the knife skills class i want everyone on this feed to be using at least an eight inch chef's knife and that's it that's a sentoku it's about a six to eight inch sentoku and so that she should might, be able to use that for anything? <laughs> 100%. And it's about the technique. And I'm going to show everyone in the knife skills class how to use a knife correctly. The bigger the knife, the less you fatigue and the more, the more it works for you, by the way, just so you know. Okay? Uh, and get your kids or anyone who's nervous a, a, a Kevlar glove and put it on your uh, weak hand. And that way, um, you know, you're like, you never worry. Is so, that heat proof? 
it, it's 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 not it's to a point it's really made more for cut proof um but it helps with heat okay. a little bit but it don't don't make for sure don't make make sure it's not just for heat anna ellis did you have a question uh, i think uh, so thank you very much by the way marcy and i'll see you guys at knife skills thank you all right um anna where are you there you are anna please unmute there you go talk to us anna ellis is a true team tila member by the way for many 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 years so um anna what's happening oh i'm trying to get on we got you you're on uh, okay i just wanted to tell you thank you so much for your um awesome cookbook Aww. it's uh saved me quite a few times with a uh, guest for dinner on a short notice because uh, they're so easy to follow and so simple to make i also yeah. Want to thank you for my pan. Do you see oh. it? Your, your, the what? I'm sorry. Oh, the uh, pan. No, pan. Uh, your video is not up. That's why. So share your video. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I couldn't find you. There's a little button on the lower left that says uh, share video. Start video. Share video. So you got your pan, right? Yes, I did. That is awesome. Very cool. Anne is a, a true longtime Team Tila fan. As you know, Allie and I. We have a great community here, and uh, uh, you guys are part of it now. So, Anne, it's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. Next time, share your video so we, you. can, so we all can see you. Um, all right. We'll um, one more. One more. And then, um, okay, Chelsea, you may unmute. Talk to us. Hi. Just a quick question. Connor, uh, okay, next. Connor, you're next. Go ahead, Chelsea. Yes. Ooh, you got golden mountain are sauce. Are any of these the Thai soybean sauce? The one on your left hand. This you one? nailed it. Yep, that's okay. Golden Mountain sauce. This one? They both are Thai soybean sauce. You basically have uh, the Thai version of Kraft versus Hellman's. Does that make sense? They both are very popular brands for different families. Um, and my family uses Maggie. Um, a lot of other families use Golden Mountain. So you can't okay. lose there. You have the right stuff. Connor is hands raised. Thank you, Chelsea. Where are you? I'm going to find you. Um, Connor, you might not have your video up. So if you don't have your video up, uh, you're going to have to message me. Um, I'm going to, I'm looking, bro. I'm looking, I'm looking for you. Connor, Connor, Connor. All I can focus on is my, 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 my high bald spot that, that's getting bigger and bigger i can't find you man type me your type me your question yeah maybe i couldn't find you holly sutton last question of the evening for real this time holly sutton's camera all right are we sharing camera yep i see you and i hear you okay so um i was looking for soybean oil sauce ah, what is this yes. this you, is what the guy fell, the gave me you fell into the the trap the minefield of the asian market yeah. Uh, you asked for soybean sauce. They gave you a semi-fermented soybean sauce, which means if you're trying to make um, if you're trying to make soy sauce, you take black beans and you ferment them until they're black, like amazingly fermented. That is like a halfway fermented, and then they make a sauce with it. It's a specialty item. It's going to be hard to use for any of the <laughs> stuff we are, but um, you can cook it with vegetables and chili, and it's super delicious. So, so you're looking for um, that Maggie or Golden Mountain sauce. So I want you to find this. This even had this at Walmart. Um, so, right. so that's what I want you to use. So. All right. So I can throw this in some chili, then, huh? Throw it in uh, with garlic and cook it with some vegetables, and uh, it's phenomenal. Okay. Uh, Brian George, what up, man? Hey, um, that's it, guys. I want to say thank you so much. Um, at Jody's homie husband, how are you? Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, send it via email because this chat window collapses once we end this meeting. Um, outside of that, on behalf of myself, Ali, and the family, thank you, Ali, for indulging your husband's crazy ideas. This was Ali a few weeks ago. You're going to teach cooking class to 100 people in our kitchen? Are you crazy? And uh, so I'm like, I'm gonna make it happen. And you guys are part of how we made this happen. So to each and every one of you, have a great evening. Um, thanks for joining us. If you do join us again for the next classes, um, we appreciate you. Halo says thank you as well. And uh, do me a favor, guys, one random act of kindness. That's all I'm asking. 
Uh, and from the Tila's, we are out of here. Good night. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you all later. You guys are amazing. Bye-bye. See you later. Stop recording. Here we go.